Hi everybody, John here again and welcome to another of my Toon Boom Harmony tutorial videos. Uh, today we are finally at the rigging stage of, of our character. I mean, if you're new to this series, we've been drawing and rigging a character from scratch. In the first video I drew the minion, in the second video I coloured him, and in the third video uh, I broke him up ready for rigging. And today, yes, we are finally going to start rigging our character, which is very exciting. I've moved myself to the other side of the screen today because um, I realised I was covering up the timeline, which is quite crucial to, to this stage of the process. Um, so we'll crack on. I, it's very hot today, so I'm a little bit sleepy, so please bear with me, and I apologise if I get a bit lost. Um, and it could take quite a while, this video, because I've noticed that quite a lot of the, the other videos on the internet are quite kind of quick, and they skip what I think is quite some important information. So I'm going to try and be as thorough as possible. So if you're an experienced um, sort of network view user, I, I apologise. But and for those that have not been sort of ne never really used it before, hopefully I'll go into lots of detail to sort of show you what everything means and how to use it. Um, so just to give you an idea, in this video I'm going to be getting the basic rig set up, and, and then over the course of the next few videos I'll be like, doing these special effects on the eyes and the auto patching on the arms and that kind of thing. Um, so in this video I'll just be getting the basic structure of the rig ready. Um, so, as you can see, our minion, our minion is all in the wrong order. The strap um, holding his goggles to his face is obviously in front of his eyes, but it should be behind. Um, his arms are in front of his uh, clothes, and his legs are obviously in front of his body. Um, to kind of get to, uh, to kind of get started, I like to do the rearranging in the timeline view. So what I like to do is go from the top, because obviously the top of the timeline is what's closest to the camera and work my way down and kind of move things about so they're in the right order and you'll see them change in the camera view. So obviously the goggle strap here is right at the top so I'm going to move that down out of the way so let's just take it down to the middle somewhere for now. Let's take it down right below the hair here. Like so. I like the facial features to be right at the front or right at the highest point of the timeline so the pupil can stay there, the eye can stay there uh, we've got another pupil and eye and a mouth, that's fine. I'll put the goggles above the mouth underneath the eyes. And then underneath the goggles as well on the goggle strap. So we'll take that and bring it up there for now. Oh, not there, one up there. Okay, so it's the goggles and the strap. Then we've got the mouth. And then we've got feet. So the feet shouldn't be there. So we're going to take those and bring them right down below the body. And back up here again, we've got the hand and the arm, so they should be below the body as well. And then we've got the hair now, so that's it, mouth, then hair, excuse me, and then the, and then the two straps from his clothing, and the pocket which is on the front of his, of, of his overalls, and then the body. Then we've got the hands and the legs. So as you can see, that's uh, I'll make that a bit smaller. That's a lot better, he looks a lot more um, kind of minion-like now. So we're going to flick over now to the network view, which is over in this window here. So I'm going to pull this out for you. Now, when I first saw this window, um, my reaction was very similar to the Home Alone boy. I kind of went, ah, because I mean, I've rigged so many characters on the timeline view. Now, I can do it quite quickly. But when I first saw this, I was just scared, to be honest. I, it just, it looked messy. I had no idea what I was doing. It was so confusing, but actually, when you get used to it, it's really good, and actually, you can do so much more amazing stuff with it than you could in the timeline view. Um, so basically, when you open it up, it, or each layer is piled on top of each other. Uh, so let's get that sorted first. So what you want to do is you want to click on the display button, which is what show what you're seeing on your display, and then go to the top here and find this toolbar. If you haven't got this, just um, click on it and go to network view. There, look, and it pops up. So click on the display and then go to this um, order network up button and click on that and then say OK. And it makes it look a lot nicer. So let's just explain quickly what each of these things are. So the blue boxes represent the, the different drawing layers on your character. So I'll show you by clicking on one here the network view and in the camera view you'll see it highlight. So that's the hair, we've got one of the straps there, the pocket, um, the body, etc. So each one of those is, a, is, is one of the drawing layers. And then the red ones here are what are just basically not being seen at the moment on the screen. So if I press um, A to show them and um, D to deactivate them. But we won't know, need those because that's our, our reference file. And the composite is basically all those things coming together to be, um, to be shown on the screen. So for example if I take, let's take the goggles here for example if I take this line, find where it joins the composite, and take this little node, oops, 
and pull it away and let go, the goggles will disappear off the camera view because they're now not connected to what's being seen on the screen. So I'll drag that back in and put it where it should be, which is roughly about there, and it pops back on the screen again. Um, but basically, the all uh, pro project files have these two. That's what gets written to the file, and this is what's displayed on the screen. Um, we'll get into sort of more detail and that a bit later. But as you can see now, we've got all of our layers all neatly organized. So I'm going to go to my, my uh, timeline view again and just select all of those drawings in that character and then do a master peg for each layer by clicking on the peg layer there. And you'll see in the screen here, you've got a load of pegs all randomly appeared over here. So again, we'll go over to our display, click on that, and then we will order it up again and you'll see that each peg is now nice and neatly on top of the drawing. And I can now select each individual piece and drag them around. Let's take the mouth for example. Okay, so that's the kind of basic start. So I've just saved that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to basically create the, the pegs, the kind of master pegs that go on top of each of those layers. So at the moment, if I select the body peg and pull that around, nothing moves. What are you? Let's hang on a second. I've got two of everything. Minion. I don't need this one. Let's get rid of him. Delete that one and deactivate that one. Okay. Deactivate. Get rid of that pig. Okay. So yeah, if I grab the body. I drag that around and nothing moves with it. But obviously what we want for this kind of puppet style animation is that when you move the body, all the other parts move with it. And if you, if you move the eyes, the whole of the eye moves, or uh, the individual parts. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating the basic rig. And I'm going to start with the eyes. So here is my pupil. Now this is obviously the, this side, uh, this is number one, so this is the left hand of the screen. Um, and I want to connect that to the, to the eye. So all I have to do is select the eye. And, and create a peg, which I use on a Mac as Apple P, and then uh, the, and, uh, you get a brand new peg which connects to the eye. So for me to join that to the pupil, I just grab this little node here and I drag another line down and connect it to the pupil. So if I connect, if, if I click on this peg now, I will move both the eye and the pupil. But at the same time, I can deselect that and still only move the pupil if I want to, like so. So I'll do that again with with this eye drag that down so now the two eyes are separate. But then on top of that sometimes you might want to move all of the goggles at the same time. So select the goggle layer, create a peg for that and again just drag down one of the nodes onto each of those pegs for the master eye. And now we've got a peg for all of that. Now I did say to you that I'd explain why I've drawn this strap all the way across and not just the little bits at the end and this is exactly why you see because I can now select the goggles and I can move them along the strap line. So it almost looks like he's turning his head. And in my animation that I'll do in two or three videos time, you'll see me do that. Um, I'm going to do a kind of little jump, uh, him jumping, I'm going to get him to turn his head slightly. So it's kind of like a cheat's way of making him turn his head, um, like that for example. Um, if you really wanted to go proper, you know, high quality, you, you could add a second layer underneath the goggles with a sort of 3D part of the goggles. As he moves his face, you could pull that out and the goggles would look a bit more 3D. But for what we're doing, this is absolutely fine. Um, but I probably don't want the goggles, the strap to be obviously included in that, because if I included the strap in there as well, obviously when I click on this, all of that would move, which would obviously ruin the illusion. So we'll just disconnect that by putting that little node away. So that's the eyes done for now. Um, I'm going to be using lots of deforms on this body, but w when you're rigging a character, always rig him up first with all these uh, pegs, and then, you, and then you can go back in and you can amend it later. But kind of get the rig working as you'd like it to be worked first, uh, and then go in and, and um, add the deforms later. So what I want to do now is create a peg for all the features, the sort of the facial features. So at the moment, um, he's just got the goggles there. So I'm going to select one just there, create a peg, and you can click on the little yellow box, and that brings up the uh, properties of each layer, and I'm just going to call that minion face. P for peg. And I'm going to then connect all the other bits, like the strap and the mouth. And so that peg will be just for the whole of the facial features, which we, we, we might possibly need. Um, and as it, I mean, he's quite a simple character. Because if I was a human character, I would have a head, a neck, maybe two parts of the upper body, two or three parts for each arm and leg. 
Um, but obviously he's quite a simple character. So, there, so this basic rig stage is not going to be too complicated. Um, so now I'm going to do one. The hair won't need to be done uh, um, with, a, with a master peg. But I'm going to do one for the body. So I'm going to create that, do a, a master peg for that. And then, actually if I leave that at the top there for a second. I'll start with the arms. So obviously the arms need to connect to the hand. So I'm going to do the same with the arms. Take number one arm. And connect that to number one hand. Take number two arm and connect that to number two hand. And the same with the leg. So number one leg, that will connect to number one foot. Number two leg will connect to number one uh, number two foot, sorry. So now if I click on these pegs, I'll be able to move the leg and the foot together. Like so, and the same with the arms. So that's a good start. Now I'll connect it up to this master peg layer. So what I want here is that this is going to be my master layer. So I'm going to call this in capitals minion underscore master peg. And I'm going to connect all of these uh, sort of main master pegs to this one big peg. So I'll do all of these first. So that's the face. And now I'll connect all the other individual bits. to that peg. Well, that's it. So now if I click on that peg at the top there I can move him all around and still work my way down the structure. And one handy thing to know is that if you start at the bottom of the hierarchy, say with the pupil, you can press B and it will go up the hierarchy. You'll see here jumping on the network view and in the camera view to the next one which is really good to the master peg and to come down you just press shift B which brings it back down the um, hierarchy. When, I, when I'm animating, I very, very now hardly ever use this um, timeline view. I normally have it all collapsed back up to the master peg and just use B and Shift B to work my way up and down the um, hierarchy, like so. So I think for this character, that is pretty good. I won't need any much more than that for his basic structure. What I'm going to do now, though, is to just set the pivot points for each of these um, parts. And then in the next video, we'll get cracking on the more kind of complex parts of the network. So I'm just going to, just going to bring this a little bit bigger again on my screen. I'm going to work my way along. So starting with the pupil. To set the pivot point, you have to basically select the rotate tool. And then you grab that and you move it into the center of the item. So I'm just going to go along and I'm going to change the pivot point of each part. So I'm going to start at the basic level, just dragging those along, and the strap, and just doing this over and over and over again. Hair one, hair two. Uh, strap. I'll go by his button, I think, for this one. Uh, pocket, probably the top of the pocket, I think. The body, what I'll do at the bottom of the body there. And The arm will be pivoted from the deform, but I'm just sticking it in the corner just for now, just to give it somewhere to be that's reasonably like where I want it to be. But again, it's not too crucial when using deforms because the deform will set the pivot point itself. Okay, now I'm going to go up and do the master pegs as well. So make sure you have your master pegs done. We're almost there, not too far. The arm as well. Whoop. Do the other ones here first. The face, smack in the middle. Again, the goggle master, and then each of these eye ones need doing as well. Perfect. Okay, and then obviously the master peg as well, which I'll probably put just smack in his middle. In, in his middle. Okay, so now for example, I can go back to my transform tool. 
I can select the hair and at the moment it will move like so. I can select each individual eye or pupil so I can move them. I can also go in and move the goggles as well. The hands and the arms, I hope I got there, can now bend and move. Like so. And obviously the legs. I can either move Oh dear, why am I getting my Hello? What have I pressed? Something's gone weird. Hang on, give me a second. I'm going to have to find out what I've pressed. Right, so sorry about that. Yes, I'm back now. Uh, whatever I'd pressed stopped me from having my controls around the edge of my pieces. So I've got it sorted now. Um, so yeah, basically it all works now and all the pivot points are all set and working. So in the next video, we'll be doing probably the eyes and getting those uh, cutting properly so that when the pupil goes um, like down here, it, it will cut when it goes past this line here on, on the goggles and not be seen over the top. Um, and then after that we'll be doing the deforms. Alright, so, so thanks for watching and uh, please do subscribe to my videos. If you want to see the previous video, please click on the button there and obviously do please leave a comment or a question. Um, I try and answer as many as I can. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now.